So my name is Tian Chi Chen. Uh, today I'm going to talk about our work on TVM. I was very excited to be here to, on the conference where systems and machine learning come together. Um, so this is a big project, and we've been working on 1.5 years. There are a lot of collaborators from University, University of Washington, and we have some external collaborators as well as the open source community that's back this project. Um, to begin with, I, I, I work on machine learning, and in particular recently I'm working on deep learning system research on building exciting new deep learning systems so that we can deploy uh, AI workloads to different kinds of devices and so on. This field is very, very exciting in the sense that every advance that you make on this field can really make a real world impact. It will deploy things to your mobile phones, to your platforms. It will give you, uh, it, it will give you, it will improve your daily life. On the other hand, um, as a researcher or even as a startup company or other, other things, what I find is that uh, doing different system research is very, very hard. Let me give you one story. So this is Thierry, my collaborator. He works on University of Washington on uh, building new architectures for deep learning, and he's a pretty awesome computer architect who build new accelerators. And the problem here is that uh, the, the story doesn't end after he built his accelerators, because in order for him to get accelerators to be used by a lot of people, he have to build an entire software stack on top of it. And that's way beyond the effort that can be done by a single graduate student. And think about other things like, you know, not only we want to build a new software stack for new accelerators, we want to build things for things like typical things are built for CPUs, GPUs, and you want to build things for, say, mobile devices, IMD GPUs, Raspberry Pi, uh, FPGAs, and even new customer accelerators. So the problem is even amplified by this whole new spectrum of emergence hardware they want to support. And we, will, we really need a solution that's reusable so that we don't have to rebuild the software stack again and again for each type of all these devices. Today I'm going to tell you one solution, and it's our solution. It also includes the challenges that involves in common, common system solutions. So it's about TVM. So how do we go from frameworks to all these different kind of hardware, including the new accelerators? Now a few steps we need to do. So one of the first typical steps that most of the different systems do is that you have computational graph optimization. So if you don't know what computational graph is, it's basically a, 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 slick, a, a slick graph, directly a slick graph that uh, represents computation in, in the, in, as nodes, and you can transform them, such as in here you can fuse multiple nodes together so that the equivalent computation can be executed more effectively on the hardware. And th this is a common approach that taken by existing uh, frameworks like TensorFlow's XLA, Intel's Nirvana graph, and so on. Uh, computation graph optimization is great, and in TVM we support quite a lot of them. The problem here is that uh, the story cannot end here, in the sense that these are high-level transformations that still leave a very huge gap between the computational graph operations and the hardware, hardware stacks. Specifically, a single node in computational graph, like convolution, does not specify the things like the variance of layout you use, the precision, the threading pattern, and how do we really map to hardware accelerators. So we will need to build another level of stack in below. In particular, we build a low-level abstraction that relies on tensor expression language that allows you to express all those computations and automatically compile those tensor expression languages to different kind of hardware. And I wouldn't be, have time to talk about all the possible solutions that we have, but I want to talk about, emphasize one specific challenge that we meet when we, when we target new accelerators. So this is called tensorization challenge. So if you are familiar with traditional CPUs and GPUs, you, you, you know that traditional CPUs normally works on scalar instructions, and now you have CMDs where you want to vectorize your instructions so that you improve your throughput. But if you look at new hardware, most of the basic primitives of new hardware are comes in the basic unit of tensor computation. And this really poses a new challenge for us in a sense that you want to really map your program, take sub part of it, map to the hardware in instructions that you have, say, in your TPU. And in TBM, what we do is that we allow hardware designer to declare a tensor instruction interface in a declarative language, and we have a system that automatically map or tensorize those instructions to the, to the target hardware platforms. And because we allow hardware designer to declare the interface, the tensor instruction interface can change and it's kind of feature-proof. Besides the tensorization challenge, there are a lot of more challenges uh, that occur in different kind of hardware. For example, different kind of hardware have, uh, have different memory system. In the accelerator, you will really to need to explicitly manage your, your cache and do effective latency hiding through explicit instructions. And of course, there are different data type changes. So in the second level, we build uh, 
uh, we build optimization stack can optimize the tense expression language. In particular, we take effective primitives from previous work like Halide and Loopy to do effective loop transformations and add new primitives such as tensorization, cooperation, latency hiding to really allow us to deploy the deep learning workloads to new hardware like GPU and new accelerators. And as a result, it's an end-to-end -end system that allows you to take deep learning models from arbitrary, frame, arbitrary front end frameworks like this is example from Keras but also take from other frameworks that we will see and will allow you to deploy it to uh, most of the language platforms that uh, most of language platforms that, that you, you can see in here. And so as a whole picture, it's the end-to-end -end system that allows you to take the, free, take the model description from front-end frameworks, go through computational graph optimization, tensor-level optimization, and get to all those backends that you want. So here we include all the major GPU backends, include Metal for Apple GPU, ARM GPU, and Vulkan, which allows you to run on the most recent Android. Uh, most of the CPU platforms, even, web, even you can run it on web browser, as well as new accelerators that's, that's going to coming up. So I'm going to show you some results. Uh, the idea here is that we compare TVM stack to the state of solutions of different systems that uses uh, vendor specific libraries, while TVM automatically generates the hardware code on each specific platform. So uh, on the left hand is the result on a server class GPU. And what you can find in here is that uh, TVM generic code that runs more effective than all the existing deep learning systems on this specific workload. And on the right hand, it's on, it runs on the ARM CPU on MXNet that's backed by a state of library called OpenBlast at MPEG. And what's more amazing here is that you can find our automatic code generation solution can even get faster speed than what a deep learning system can offer. This is a very hard task in a sense that Keep in mind, all those vendor specs, uh, all these libraries are, are manually optimized. And what we are trying to do is we are trying to use uh, automatic system solution that compete against manually optimized solutions. And we are getting better results in here. And another interesting story is that if you look at, on the left side, for example, TensorFlow actually uh, works worse than TensorFlow because uh, the TensorFlow runs on the state of our CUNDN library and it's really hard to beat that baseline, which we are able to do. This is a more recent result by Liaming. Uh, it runs on the ARM, G ARM GPU. So it's the same code that allows you to lower the, uh, lower the TV from the TVM stack to lower your computations through those ARM GPUs. And what we can find here is that by using our solution, we can run two times faster than what ARM compute library officially provides. And finally, uh, I have to talk about like, it's always interesting on how you can write program for accelerators beyond writing simple assembly code. And in order to do that, actually at University of Washington, Terry, my collaborator, built this FPGA-based prototype of a uh, deep learning accelerator that contains all the aspects like tensorization and other hardware aspects that we have. And what we can show here is by applying our solution, we can automatically lower the front-end frameworks to those hardware uh, new accelerators and get decent speed-ups on here. And this is really exciting for us in a sense that it really provides a portable solution that allows you to so now when Thierry built his new hardware, he doesn't have to rebuild a software stack from scratch. He can just take TVM stack and, and directly make all the frameworks run on his hardware. Okay, with that, I would like to conclude my talk. Uh, please check our, our website, it's the open source project in our partial license, and we'll definitely love everybody to take a look and contribute. Cool, thanks very much. Um, yeah, I have a quick question about your expected result. So when you claim like a win over industrial solution, did you compare entire spectrum? Because uh, in general, industri industrial solution focuses on a few common cases where it is performs very well, but in other cases, it may not. So here, mm -hmm. in the pr previous slide, okay. the K80, so here, can you tell me more about your setup for so these numbers? So the question is about the uh, setups. So the setup is that it's inference workload on, uh, on common um, machine learning libraries, almost common machine learning workloads like ResNet MobileNet. And we use the state of libraries, the MXNet, that tries to auto-tune to pick the best COD implementation, while TVM stack automatically generates all the code by itself. So this is not a tensor RT. It's not a tensor RT, yeah. Well, uh, 
it's TensorRT is a, is a, is a non-library that uses effective A-B generation, and we are still, there's a gap between us and TensorRT, but notice that it's already very hard to compete against the CODN libraries. And if you look at other, other parts, like the Raspberry Pi experiment, it's a MaxNet on NPEG and OpenBLAST, and that's kind of a state-of-art solution that you can currently get. And if you look at the ARM compute library, this is what ARM, what, what you can offer, what, what's the best solution that you can get in the GPU platforms on ARM. And the idea here is that uh, by using one solution, you can deploy it to all these kind of platforms and getting portable, pla portable performance. All right, let's thank the speaker again.